probably let this presentation just bleed a little bit into the um, start okay. of lunch, um, just to make up for the time we've lost here. Uh, please welcome Christoph Lemeter with large memory management issues. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this is summarizing some of the headaches that I currently have with my uh, high performance uh, stuff that I operate in my company. I work for uh, um, an HFT company, and uh, we have a huge number of computational clusters. And I'm also uh, sitting on uh, various uh, committees where we talk about uh, these issues with the national labs and uh, various other uh, companies that have similar issues. Uh, most of them are rather uh, large, but uh, I think this now also applies to uh, the smaller systems because they become much, much bigger. So let's see if I can change to the next page. Ah, good, that works. <laughs> So uh, I want to talk about a bit what we are seeing right now in the terms of where the average server moves to in terms of hardware configuration and where do we see the, the, the nodes in, in the clusters also go. This is kind of similar because a lot of the uh, server technology is being reused for the computational clusters. And then talk about uh, some of the limitations that we have in terms of the hardware, uh, some issues um, where we have problems and we really wish we could use the huge page uh, in the page cache something about the configuration and the fragility of all these things that we are doing. Um, and I wish that would be much simpler. And then the various approaches that we've done to tackle these problems. Um, so the general subject is, yeah, memory is getting much more large and much more diverse. And so we have issues uh, with uh, throughput mostly. That's typical for HPC. We always want more throughput. We always want more, more memory bandwidth and we want more data to be shared between the nodes. So the faster we share, the better we can run these simulations, and uh, the better we can do large-scale concurrency. Uh, so um, it seems, from what I, I, I can see right now in the industry, uh, we will have a multi-terabyte uh, uh, servers soon, given just look at the dim trends. We, uh, we already have deployed a half a terabyte servers, and they are about a year old, and I think next year uh, this is going to be a, a two terabyte configuration. And I'm, uh, I shouldn't be talking about a production system, so I'm talking about a future two terabyte system that will be possible in 2018, and the issues that will, could be arising with that. And then we have also the MVRAM uh, projects coming up, uh, where you have uh, multiple times of that storage, and you also memory map it, and uh, that also gets you uh, into uh, other issues, but I'm going to talk less about that because we're not sure yet if you want to use this and what actually the point of this whole thing would be in our configurations. And so uh, I was, for the last uh, eight years, I was mostly working on getting the latency down on the processing to make sure that our uh, systems can respond faster. This is no slight shift last year. We suddenly run into uh, issues in terms of memory management for large memory. That was what I did in a prior job for SGI. And uh, that was when the supercomputers had a terabyte of memory. And now we're looking at the uh, servers, one single server having a terabyte of memory. So suddenly these issues come back after a decade or so. And I was a bit surprised by that. So I had to do a small focus shift. Um, so. Um, that is pretty strange, but um, anyways, I'm dealing with the issues that I've dealt with 10 years before in a slightly warped way yet now. Um, so the common issues that uh, exist with uh, processor memory that we've often dealt with in the past, uh, we want throughput of the processor, and that's limited by, limited by the processor technology, so you need to work with a processor manufacturer like Intel and come up with new uh, 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 changes to the hardware to make that faster, and that has been also going on forever with the national labs and most people that work with HPC technology. And then there's uh, the problem with the memory itself, where the technology limits the uh, performance you can get from a DIMM, and so you need to work with the memory manufacturers to make sure that the channels get wider and you can get more data uh, to and from memory. Then there's latency issues with memory. Um, the problem is uh, if you have data that's close, close, close clustered together, then the data is local, and therefore usually you have less of a latency penalty than when you access data that's far further away from that data. Because uh, the DRAM will fetch a complete row of data, or the processor cache will fetch a cache line of 64 bytes, there's all these various aggregation methods in between to buffer you from experiencing too much latency. If you 
uh, ignore this issue, then you will have to uh, refetch a new cache line, you would have to uh, fill up the page buffer again on the dim, and therefore the latency will become uh, pretty high. Um, so there's constant work on that one to kind of uh, condense the data structures and make them a local, make the accesses local within an application in order to avoid uh, the hits on the uh, latency. And there's capacity issues. There's a trade-off usually. If you have more capacity and you put more dims onto uh, 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 a certain memory bank, then the uh, speed of access goes down because of the electrical characteristics of the, uh, and the load on the uh, dim channels. So there's always this, this challenge, and what do you, how do you, go, do you go for more speed? Do you go for more capacity? And this is a constant struggle uh, that, that has been there also forever. And there's reliability. If you have large systems and you have a, a low MTBF, then it is very likely that uh, the system will fail. And actually in a large cluster, it is very likely that you have at least uh, a, a couple of systems that are currently not working. If you have a cluster of, let's say, a thousand nodes, you can bet that 10 of those won't work and some other 10 may fail while you do something with them. So um, you need to have uh, uh, recovery mechanisms for memory. Uh, bad page elimination is good. Um, bad dim elimination is also good. Let's say a dim fails and you still want to use a node, then you can just maybe reboot it or so, and it can still participate in the uh, uh, computation. And you can then rescue uh, at least bits of the, of the system to be sure that uh, your large cluster will still work. Um, what we had in the past often was that uh, a dim failed, the, system, the, the node was taken out for good until, until the simulation was complete or the simulation failed. So some of that is in there, but, but it's pretty fragile. And what's coming in the future for processor memory, what I've seen from various vendors is we even have data processing on the dim. There are now uh, attempts on the way to integrate FPGAs onto the dim. And so you can now uh, run your special algorithms at line speed on the DIMM, maybe to do a, a simple calculation. And uh, the weirdest thing I've heard it was that some DIMMs actually run in Linux kernel now to do the management of the page buffers and the uh, various uh, prefetching things that are going on there. So uh, a single server will just be a collection of Linux kernels that are in various places. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's look at the two terabyte machine. Um, so um, typically those machines have a high speed interconnect, so you're looking at 100, bigger than 100 gigabits per second. Um, cores, 40 to 4096. There's actually processors out there right now that give you 2K uh, threads, for example, RISC-V. Um, and it gives you up to 16K hardware context. These are the numbers that we had in, with rows of machines at SGI in, uh, when I used to work there in 2005 and 2006. So now we have that on a small chip. Um, then usually these, mach these machines have various offload mechanisms in order to avoid expensive processing. It means that there's a vector unit on the processor so that you can do parallelized uh, 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 vector operations like adding, subtracting, multiplication. There may be some GPUs on there that are used for uh, aggregating uh, uh, calculations, uh, floating mode calculations also elsewhere because the GPU has much more, many more threads than a regular processor. And then there's these various many core uh, implementations that are around. One of them is the Xeon Phi, and the other ones are new developments in Asia right now that are actually going much further than uh, where the Xeon Phi is going, and that seems to be also very popular as an extension card. And so uh, the diagram here is, um, let's say you have a system with two terabytes. So what is used by which component? So I, I extrapolated from our current systems. And so what we have so for the terabyte system, you have over 2,000 uh, gigabytes being used for the uh, application at the page cache. The BIOS needs about 10. Uh, the system and the binaries need about 40. And memory management needs about 50. Um, the memory management number is there because uh, the memory needs to be backed by page structs. And every uh, 4K page needs a 64-byte uh, cache line to uh, determine the status and track the status of a page, what's going on with it. And so with that, you end up with the memory management overhead being larger than the, what the BIOS does or the operating system does, and um, it's pretty significant. Um, so the large memory segments usually you want to dominate here because otherwise you get into scaling issues with the, with the OS. And there's, there's actually no way to do swap here. Given the speed of your devices, even with 100 gigabits per second, 
uh, trying to swap stuff out and in in terms of gigabytes is too slow. So um, typically these are two, two, two socket machines. Usually I would expect them to have one terabyte per node. Um, the such, ultimately, such a box, box becomes very complex given all these, these things because the machine always operates at the boundaries of its capabilities. And the system admins are hired to get the maximum out of this thing. So they're constantly tweaking and twiddling around with that thing and seeing if this setting or that setting will do any better. And then the system will fail and they come to me and I have to, have to fix things somehow. Um, so fragility becomes a problem. And I found out that often they have to actually use huge pages for full performance, although they stay away from that because the huge pages are pretty complex to configure and there are so many intricacies that you need to know in order to set it up the right way that it's often very difficult to do that and um, you often end up with uh, various failure scenarios. So uh, if we have huge pages, then we are bound by the GEEP uh, limitations of the processor. Um, there's two Mac and one gig huge pages on Intel processors. And so if you look at this, there has been a gradual development of having uh, uh, more and more uh, uh, huge pages supported, especially the two M pages are very well supported now. It can reach up to two terabytes now without uh, a TLB fault if we use them for all of them for uh, two MEC pages. Uh, on the one gig uh, uh, size, you have a limitation here, maximum is 16. Uh, with Broadway and Skylake, so you can only access 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM using uh, huge pages, using giant pages. And so, um, and, and the earlier ones don't, seem, don't even support that. Uh, and so there is also a trade-off now in terms of the hardware. What does the hardware allow? And, and so you see, if you have a two terabyte system, you can't really use uh, the one gig mappings because there are too few TLB entries. If you would be using that, you would be getting TLB trashing. So you, you probably need to end up with two MEC pages for the whole of the memory. By the way, if you have any, any questions, just jump in, uh, because otherwise I'll hit on just continue to talk. Do you mean, as a your question, is there any development to make this use of huge pages easier? Yeah. I would encourage that. I'll talk about several issues later on that level. <laughs> okay, the question was, why does the BIOS take 10 gigabytes of RAM? I have no access to the BIOS. <laughs> I just know, okay, this is, a, this is manufacturer, and I'm seeing, okay, I should have this much, and then I know that the memory map shows me it, had, it took that one. <laughs> okay. Um, pardon? Yeah, he, he says basically there may be shadow page tables in the BIOS and that would account for this amount of uh, memory. I've also seen with SGI systems, I know that they actually do cache line and to do, do take, keep maps of cache lines uh, that are sitting on other systems. If this is a multi-node system, and uh, they would have to have some routing information for the NUMA interconnecting stuff. Okay. Okay, it doesn't do that anymore. All right. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. So problem areas that we usually see, um, engineers are experimenting with the stuff to optimize the configuration and the systems goes OOM and unpredictable configurations. Uh, so that is usually uh, great fun to deal with because uh, you always have to figure out what exactly is going on now, what did they do, how did they stack the stuff and where did the uh, OOM occur. But these are extreme configurations that are usually not um, seen in other user scenarios. So that this is, uh, this is uh, Understandable. There's a difficulty of configuration here because of the various trade-offs involved and the complexity of this whole thing. And the question also, where did all my memory go? Right, so um, the, that the OS actually needs 50 gigabytes here to uh, do its pages mapping was a surprise to them initially. And they, what? <laughs> uh, 
And so, so they, uh, I bought all of this RAM. Why did I get my full memory? Um, then you have to do the decisions. Do you use 4K pages, 2 meg pages, 1 gig pages? Each size has a, has a benefit, as you saw. So um, how do we do this? This, this can, gets very complicated, and that's where we need us actually a uh, lot of help to simplify that for the average uh, system engineer that can think of this. So uh, then there's the issue of application design. Um, the application now needs to be designed to use the one gig and the two meg pages, and it basically needs to be written to the hardware. And so whenever you change the hardware, you change your application, and you're constantly changing your application with the tuning of the, uh, of the machine itself, which makes it, 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 it um, a bit of a mess and difficult to do. And let's say you have a two terabyte machine and you have all your memory, your, your data and memory, and you want to save it. That's a bit difficult. Even if you have a 100 gigabit cross-connect or a, a file system, it will take a, a while to um, dump the stuff off. And so there's still the desire to have faster interconnects and faster uh, speeds in I.O., but the current uh, limitations of the processor system doesn't allow more. So there's various things on, uh, going on there as well in the labs to um, try to bypass that. Okay. This is a memory issue, so we want to write large segments of memory very, of very fast, so it's typical to use uh, IOs and sizes of gigabytes each. If you have a two terabyte system, or even now with the smallest ones, it's, it's mostly uh, gigabyte transfers. And um, yeah, the ultimate question is how do you transfer terabyte in a reasonable fashion? So TCP, a network stack, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> you, you can barely keep up with 10 gig there. This is not going to work uh, that well. Um, if you go to a block device, and you, then you can bypass all of this and go directly via uh, ISO or via some other uh, network protocol um, to them. So that bypasses that. Then we, if you have 4K pages now, we are adding up with, um, yeah, one million of, of the page structure that have to be processed to transfer uh, a couple of gigabytes uh, to the medium now. And uh, if memory is fragmented, then these uh, 4K blocks cannot be joined together for the I.O. request, and you have huge scatter gather lists, and that in itself can cause, cause a lot of memory issue in the operating system. Um, so it, even regular I.O. can get very difficult with these things, and you end up writing specialized programs to, just to do a copy operation, because otherwise uh, strange things may occur. And uh, this causes a great distrust of the application developers versus the operating system developers, because they say, this stuff that never works. We have to do our own things and rig it together. <laughs> um, so, but then, okay, then usually people end up with is doing direct I.O., so bypass most of it and go directly to uh, the device. The problem then is you run multiple uh, processes on the uh, machine, and now you can't share the data from your file anymore because everyone has their own copy. Uh, so they still want the page cache, but the, the performance criteria must make, make, make it possible. Uh, so this is particular actually to, uh, also to Intel, as, as machines that have larger page sizes. And we've played around with, with power and ARM, and that, the issue there is not that severe, and actually mostly we, can, we were able to get to full throughput with those things. Um, but um, there are other issues that keep us from uh, these vendors. It's just married to Intel right now. And um, yeah, so then, then there's the other APIs that we want to avoid, RDMA and RDMA over fabrics, which uh, are new offer protocols. And we also experiment with those, and some of the EOS solutions now have used the RDMA APIs instead. Yes. Yeah, that's our basic application architecture, actually, yes. The problem is we can't write the stuff out fast enough because every 4K page has to be touched. And over time, memory gets fragmented, and uh, you get huge uh, collections of lists submitted to the I.O. subsystem, and the performance just breaks down. So um, what is going on now is, is they, they just do direct I.O., and then, yeah, you can't share the data, and the other application has to read it again. It's bad. and. Um, yeah, some people want to rewrite the, uh, another page cache layer in user space, basically just based on two Mac page size, which is yeah, strange. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, right. It would be, it would be great if, if this would work for two Mac pages, for example. It would, it would save us a lot of uh, uh, heartache there. So um, we wish we had larger contiguous segments. And uh, so we have the base allocation set of 4K on Intel. And uh, so if, we, if they would be contiguous, then we could uh, get the scalar gather list down and could actually do this in a much faster way. Um, so, but if you do an allocation of various page sizes in a Linux kernel, then memory will defragment over time. And after at least a day or two, you will end up with the ability only to access four kilobyte, uh, four kilobyte pages. And that then means that you can no longer use uh, uh, larger contiguous memory sizes. So, uh, so some kernel subsystems do that, and then they fall back to 4K when they're no longer available. So as time passes, the kernel becomes slower and slower, and um, so the system needs to be rebooted once in a while to keep things sharp. Um, it even affects cell phones these days. Some cell phones have a, have a function, they reboot me once a week. Also, memory fragmentation issue, they also use contiguous memory allocation and expect uh, higher, higher performance. And uh, if, it, if your phone gets sluggish, reboot it. Same thing with the servers. <laughs> the problem is that system bringer of an HPC clusters with a couple of thousand nodes can take pretty long, and it may be in the range of days in, in the next gen cases. So this is not really a great option. And so when you reboot a, a, an HPC cluster, sometimes you have to take extreme precautions, and uh, it takes a lot of effort by, by people to prepare that the boot will just go the right way. And if something breaks, then you can redo it, <laughs> which is bad. So this, this also results in more uh, fragility. So the huge pages should rescue us, right? With these huge pages, we have uh, two meg of contiguous memory, so that should work. Uh, that should significantly reduce the number of scalar gather entries. So the dynamic allocation is not possible after some time. So um, at any point, the two meg pages became I'm exhausted. So you really can't rely on dynamic allocation. So what you need to do then is to reserve huge pages on boot up. Uh, so now you want to run a different application which, which uh, needs less huge pages or more huge pages. Now you can reboot the system again. You always end up with a reboot, <laughs> with the fragmentation or with, with that one. <laughs> and this is also a cause of significant frustration for everybody involved here. Um, and yeah, this issue, as you they're not part of the page cache. And so applications cannot share the data. And therefore, you have issues with uh, multiple processes working on the same data set on a system. Because they would, e they would each have their own uh, data copies. So in practice, what you do then is you ensure that different processes work on different pieces of the data set so that the overlap rarely occurs. And if you do that, then uh, things go much better. So. Um, if you look at this, maybe what would be a solution is a segmented memory space. So we have this um, uh, two terabyte, and now we say, okay, we have 48 gigabytes where we use two meg pages. With 4K pages, we have 1900 gigabyte where we use two meg pages, and we have 101 gig pages. We can't use more than those because if you use too many of those, we get TLB flushing problems with the internet architecture. Okay. And so this is kind of a, now you have a segmentation of memory for various purposes. Now you need to write your application so that it uh, fits to that. And then you can use the maximum abilities of the hardware to actually do I.O. and have the full uh, throughput to memory. Um, so this avoids kind of have to deal with the memory fragmentation issue. You have always have these one gig pages and the two meg pages available. Um, the problem is now you get also OOM errors. Let's say you have the application requiring too many huge pages, and there are multiple threads allocating huge pages, and sometimes and so suddenly another thread comes up which requires another set of huge pages, and now the thing goes OOM. Uh, so this uh, gives rise to more fragility in the whole uh, construction. And so this requires continued tuning of page sizes and applications use of page sizes to the capability of the processor. So you have at least a couple of guys sitting there and just learning all about this and uh, redesigning uh, and continuously adjusting your uh, boot time configurations and rebooting the systems. <laughs> Any questions? I've, told, I've asked it for the longest time. I've tried whatever I could. <laughs> he was asking, when, why don't we get rid of 4K pages? And I said, just hallelujah, yes, yes, do it. I'm all for it.
What else? There are various attempts in the past by various developers, or by me included, to get rid of this. And they were all failing for various reasons, one or the other. Uh, so uh, in terms of the hardware support, on Intel you only have the 4K and then you have the 2 Mac. On other architectures you have different sizes. Yes, you can. Yes, that was done in 2005 by, what's his name? He's no longer an active developer. Huh? ARM64 uses a default of, of uh, 64K page size. Even ARM is there. Okay. So another solution that I've talked about before is to have movable objects or garbage collection in the kernel. Uh, if we could garbage collect objects in the kernel, and we, uh, so we can avoid uh, fragmentation and can reduce that. Then we could continuously allocate uh, large segments of memory uh, without uh, uh, the risk of, of the fragmentation. So uh, the problem is kernel objects have physical addresses, so this will require, require the relocation of an object. And not to guarantee that this actually works, we need to have all kernel objects being movable. This means adding logic to the kernel in order to uh, <laughs> allow it a decent uh, way of moving these, these things around. Um, so <laughs> then if we could use other page sizes easily, and we can also do, use a 64K page uh, thing in a consistent way. Uh, the other thing that, uh, to get rid of the, uh, the 4K page, we could just say, we, in general, we allocate 64K pages not 4K pages, and then if we don't, can't use the neighboring pages, we just, they just lie there fallow, and whenever we fit something in there that's next to the, the object, then it would work. But this all is harebrained schemes, I think. Um, so what, on the movable, movable objects thing, uh, we could start doing that one of the most frequently used objects. I have, to have a patch set that does it like that, but uh, there's issues with that. Um, uh, I've done some work together with Matthew Wilcox here on uh, getting the X-ray movable, and that seems to be working. Um, but uh, there's probably a lot of work ahead of us if we're going to go that route. And there's this memory loss here due to largely unused uh, uh, page structs for huge pages. So the reason we are lo losing 50 uh, gigabytes there per system is uh, because we are using, uh, for, for every 4K segment of the huge page has its own page struct. So uh, what really is done in, in terms of the kernel, most of the status information is only in the first page struct and maybe something in the following, but the, the rest is not used. So actually, uh, 500, 510 of those uh, 512 64 byte page structs are not needed. So you could say it's 32K per 2 meg page. That's what 1.6% of memory. Um, in a, let's say we have a two terabyte system with 2,000 huge pages. Uh, we could be losing 22, 32 gig of memory. Uh, but if you have a cluster with a couple of thousand nodes, you can waste the terabytes range of, of memory just by, uh, because of those page structures that are everywhere and are never being used. Um, so the fundamental issue is we need to have some way to maintain the state of a page with a larger uh, size than 4K in the kernel. And uh, this also means we may have to modify the memory map in order to avoid overhead. And this is, uh, is also going to the very core of uh, some of the Linux functionality and is also a dicey thing that <laughs> we would do. Maybe just tolerate that for now because there's bigger issues. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we need to memory map them for multiple page sizes. We could do this, putting some flags in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's skip. <laughs> so also the list of issues that I think could use some attention and I'm trying to work on it if I can. Uh, fast I/O for large contiguous memory segments. So direct I/O should not upgrade page pages in all 4K pages. That's, that's probably a simple thing to do. Uh, so able ability to do effective I/O on one gig page. Can I just write a couple of gig onto the, the device, but just a few requests going to the controller, so that it can just hum in the background while I do other things? That would be great. Uh, then huge page support for the page cache. I think uh, we could get there, right? There were some patches out there um, that implemented that on THP. So Maybe that's possible. Um, yeah, memory loss, yeah, I just pooped upon that one. That next one, uh, defragmentation, yeah, movable objects. It's, I think at least we can see how far we can go with this. So I'll, whatever time I have spare, I will invest and see what I can do with this. 
Um, then make huge page management simpler, as I was mentioned before. Uh, and uh, one gig support is similar as two meg support. There's also a difference now between one gig support and two meg support. And if, if you have your system engineer there, and now he's saying, okay, you can also use one, one gig page, and then uh, things fall apart again because he's used to do two things a certain way which don't work anymore on the one gig page. So maybe just make this all uniform and work consistently. That would be great. Um, maybe something to easily configure uh, huge page reservations on boot up so that we can specify which, how many uh, pages on which node and uh, that uh, the, this whole thing is, is, will be much easier. Ideally, we'd like to have huge pages to be as easy to use as 4K pages. Uh, or maybe make the THP better so that it's uh, actually uh, that it does all these things. Um, so that may be another um, thing. And that's it. So any questions? Testing. Yep, that works. Um, uh, the um, page size, uh, 4K is too small. Is 8K big enough? Or is some sort of formalized idea of what is an ideal page minimum size? I've played around with PowerPC and with ARM, and I know that with a 64K page size, the performance issue would go away. I'm not sure for how long, but uh, this is, we didn't have the same constraints as on Intel with a 64K page size. Hello. Uh, the, the whole point about pagination at the end of the day was originally a way of uh, distributing small amount of memory across large amount of uh, rotating space. Now that we have much bigger amounts of memory available, mm -hmm. is it possible to actually get rid of pagination altogether? Or have we any other get approaches? Rid of pagination? Getting rid of pages altogether and have continuous memory space uh, actually being used directly by the processor. This gets to even drastic, more drastic measures than I proposed. Um, yes, uh, definitely, if you have no, without the paging overhead, it would be, certainly would be better. But on the other hand, the processors and everything is designed for paging these days. And if you get rid of that, you get into severe issues even with the binaries that you have, have and that you uh, cannot get into memory without paging. I just want to respond to the gentleman over there who, who asked about, um, you know, would 8K or 16K be? Uh, the, the, the dominant factor in, in, in the overhead is per page overhead. So if your page is twice as big, you have half as many pages, you've cut your overhead by half. If you have 64K mm -hmm. pages, you've, you've cut your overhead by a factor of 16. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 8K is significantly better. It's, it, it's, it's twice as good um, for this particular set of workloads. And mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the CPU architects bear uh, have, have a lot of things to consider, yeah. <laughs> one of which is compatibility with uh, <laughs> existing binaries, right. and uh, another of which is a lot of different workloads. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some example applications that actually benefit from having one server with 2T of RAM versus many servers with like small amounts of RAM. Uh, can you repeat the question? What exactly? What Which are some applications that benefit from having a single server with more RAM? Single set with more server, RAM. Server. Single server with more RAM. The, the use case you're discussing here. Um, well, the use cases are uh, the, the, the typical HPC workloads. So for example, weather prediction, hurricane prediction, uh, simulation of a nuclear blast. Um, uh, simulation of the universe and uh, various deep learning mechanisms and, and stuff. So these are all uh, algorithms that, that benefit from the, as large uh, uh, a data set as you can afford and do as many calculations as possible on this data set. The larger the data set is and the more frequently you can iterate across this, the better your hurricane prediction will be and the better your simulations of your early universe will be and the better your gene projection that will come out of the gene modification will be. So this is a key uh, mechanism that brings us brings our science forward. That's why there is this race in supercomputers and by now the Chinese are winning because they have the fastest supercomputer and the uh, US and the Europeans are now trying to catch up. This is uh, what gives you, makes, makes you able to have progress in the basic material sciences as well as cosmology.
Do we have any more questions? Okay. Uh, please thank you, Christoph.